I have compiled a list of over 1,000 unique Calamity spoilers, some you've definitely not seen before. From item reworks to boss changes, this video contains everything you can expect from the next update, as well as a roadmap of what's to come in the future. So let's begin with the upcoming Sunken Sea biome expansion update. This will be the very next major update in a series of updates aiming to drastically improve existing Calamity biomes, with the order something along the lines of the Sunken Sea into the Brimstone Crags. Here are the newest small baby variants of Ghost Pills, as well as the adult version. These are passive critters that deal contact damage and will have a unique rework to their functionality, in which instead of killing these critters to obtain the Voltaic Jelly accessory, you'll now actually need to catch a special variant of the baby Ghost Bell with a bug net. Think of like Infernum's Abyss where you capture the Herring Staff. With the vast array of Ghost Bells, there will also be added fishies and even new critters such as seahorses to add more life into the Calamity biome. Additionally, two new mini bosses are set to arrive this update, with one of them hinted at being a promoted version of the Citytron. As for the biome layout, there's been mention of the Sunken Sea broken into many different sub biomes. At the transition layer, between the desert and Sunken Sea will be an area called the Timeless Shores, fueled with some terrifying undead creatures. Moving into the upper layer within the Sunken Sea, you will find the Statue of the Forgotten King. We don't know whether this will be purely aesthetics or has some unique functionality, but definitely a nice addition. And finally, all that's known so far is the Oxygen Starved Cave, the main Sunken Sea chamber where you are able to fight the newly resprited Giant Clan. As for additional critters that are being worked on, we have a redesign of the Gem Crawler enemies, and a potential new Bumblebird pet roaming the surface jungle. Looking closely into the 400 or so change logs so far, we have a list of new weapons being added, a new set of auric furniture, and with the auric tiles now being able to send both golf balls and NPCs flying. I also noticed that the harvest staff is being completely reworked, and their Twitter showcasing the cutest little boy just strolling around indicating it's most likely going from an early game mage weapon to summoner orientated. Other notable changes you can expect to see is a mini rework to the soul edge, with improved visuals, projectile homing, and making it shoot 3 souls per swing, and pretty much a gameplay revert of the terror to me. Now once again being able to home onto targets, and also making it shoot a whole lot faster than it is currently. A lot of these reworks aren't public, however what I can show you is the hive. This is a post Plaguebringer Goliath rocket launcher, which can now shoot a wide volley of 4 missiles that explode on contact with either enemies or tiles. This can also be charged up to launch a more devastating nuke on impact. And yeah, maybe be careful when using rockets that destroy tiles. This is the same developer responsible for the recent Kingsbane rework, as well as the Arc Nova line. I noticed a trend towards more unique ranger weapons, with each having its own charging mechanisms. Lastly, are the pretty much finalized re-sprites of all the Aerolite equipment coming within the next update. For the melee class, you will have your Wind Blade, for the rogue class, we have the Turbulence, as well as a new weapon, the Dragon Fang. As for rangers, the Gale Force will be restrided, however it's not public at the moment. But we do have a new glove weapon, called the Gilded Gatherer, that just looks awesome. Mage users, with the new fan weapon, the Tailwind Tezen, as well as the Melody of Paradise. And lastly, Summoners, which of course is getting the long-awaited Calamity Whip, called the Skycaller Lash. You may have also noticed a tent, which at the very least, we can assume this takes inspiration from the camping mod, allowing you to set up a tent for temporary spawn points. The next few weapons were planned reworks with no expected release date. This includes the change to the elemental blaster, now reworked into the elemental saw launcher. Holding left click charge to the saw, and it's able to be released to rapidly spin outwards shooting bullets. And the same artist who did that is also responsible for the recently respited Murasama. As we know, the Murasama is not officially done yet. The recent mini rework is what seems like a prelude to a major one coming in the future. We have official confirmation that the Murasama will get an arsenal armor treatment, meaning a new Dreadon station, and it will be able to be upgraded throughout progression, gaining new abilities and special modes. Furthermore, we do have some awesome color variants to the Murasama. These are colors representative of the Calamity devs, and will be Shimmer variants to swap between the different palettes. And hopefully, maybe this Murasama bug gets a fixed as well. Finally, Oslochon has stated plans for Nana Black sets and Miracle Matter weapons. This was quoted 3 years ago, however we do have some recent confirmation that Miracle Matter is getting another weapon, and judging from the array of existing Miracle Matter weapons, it's either going to be for the melee or summoner class. 
there's a lot to be excited for. And what better than Calamity's Master Mode compatibility coming in the next update. Apart from exclusive pets, the objective of these set of changes aims to no longer just make Master Mode stat increases to every enemy and just calling it a day. We have new Calamity balance changes, such as reduced Master Mode enemy HP by 25%, reduced enemy projectile values by 10%, and reduced enemy contact by 10%. Special mechanics will also be integrated, such as enemies having their unfair contact damage outright removed. Some examples include Harpies, Giant Curse Skulls, and Icy Mermen. As for Master Mode bosses, you can expect to see their AI changed as well. There is literally pages of changes, so I'll just flash them on screen for you guys to read. All you need to know is that it will actually feel like a new difficulty, and hopefully good fun as well. And the last topic I'll cover in this update is the Adrenaline Mini Rework. We know currently, when you get hit whilst charging Adrenaline, you will lose all of it, even if it was just a tiny bit of damage. Now with these new changes, hits pause the meter for 1 second, and enemies that damage you for 5% of your max HP will only partially deplete the meter, scaling with the amount of damage taken. This will make it easier to charge up adrenaline, but to compensate, we have a nerf to its damage values. I personally work on this change, as I know for a fact once I get to post Moodlord, I'll usually get hit before I have a chance to use my adrenaline meter, but feels bad for the professional no-hitters. These are all the guaranteed things I know will be in the next update. So now let's talk about future upcoming content to Calamity. Starting with the Desert Scourge, which will be getting a respite. The Slime God, which will be resprited and reworked. Showcases of an Ebon Slime with wings and a Crim Slime Paladin with spikes. As for the Ravager, this has planned to be re-tiered and reworked to a post-providence boss, with the aim to make it more unique, and potentially the primary boss to access Blood Flare armor. There is concept art and sprite already made, however it is not public at the moment. The same thing can be said for the Great Sand Shark, which will also be re teed at some point in the future. As for other mini bosses, of course we've mentioned the Giant Clam, but expect to see significant changes to the Armored Digger, renamed to the Deconstructor and consisting of 3 tiers at major points of progression. Cygnus with the re-sprite to the boss and a full on overhaul to the fight once the sprite is complete. Devour of Gods, which will be a full-blown rework. As for the actual boss fight itself, we have a significant size increase in comparison to what we have currently. It's important to mention the number of segments will be reduced to compensate. Yaren is still currently being worked on, with some new shading in the most recent iteration. Supreme Climatas has a surprise re-sprite planned, which will actually come in the newest Calamity 2.0.4 update. There is no major public spoilers, however, here's one pixel for you. Thanks Calamity Mod Twitter. These are what's in store for the current bosses in Calamity. However, as many of you may be aware, three more are yet to arrive and will most likely take a long, long time for its arrival. Yarum will canonically be the final boss pertaining to Calamity lore, as well as two post-game super bosses being Zerok and Noxus. Remember, these are powerful gods and will be built to be insanely hard. There are no spoilers of what any of these will do, but so far, we have official concept art of Zerok's pre-ascension form. This won't make its way into Calamity, but I might as well show Showcase it. That's all for major boss spoilers, and now let's cover NPCs and non-boss characters. Firstly, we have the Sea God, residing within the Sunken Sea, though not much is known about its role in the actual Calamity mod. We can take information from the Beast Theory to indicate that the Sunken Sea was unified under two gods, Otonulu, the Goddess of Electricity, and the God of the Sea. Additionally, Status is probably one of the most well-known side characters, with many references already in the game. Citing from the official lore document, he was the legendary ninja, and his clan worshipped the slime god. It is said that he is still alive and has made a deal with Cygnus in order to escape banishment from the distortion biome. Whilst not a mini boss or a boss you can fight, Status will be a wandering quest NPC, with the final quest being the Cygnus fight. And along with him, we have the official art concepts of who I like to call the friend of Status, Greylock. Both these characters dueled Yarim to a standstill, and has also been confirmed to not be a permanent town NPC, but a wanderer that can be found within the distortion subworld. Whether he sell gear or provide side quests, the only relevant information I have is a potential Brailler armor set, which should take over the current silver melee. More on this on the armor set section. Lastly, a quick talk about Shimmer NPC variants. It's been almost a year since these were announced, with plans of the Cirrus and Bandit NPCs. However, no other news have been said about it. But since we've been hinting at the distortion, let's now cover future plans for every single known subworld for Calamity. The most infamous and well-known subworld we have so far is the distortion. To access it, you'll need to defeat the Ceaseless Void within the Forsaken Archive. Don't forget this structure was hinted to have a future use, leading you to the distortion biome, with a massive arena to fight the Devour of Gods. Outskirts of the subworld will most likely have other content as well, such as new enemies to obtain endothermic energy and nightmare fuel. All the possibility of distortion ores that you can mine up, 
as Triangle has stated the removal of Cosmolite drops from the Devour of Gods. As for other subworlds, you can expect to see the Dragon's Airy home to where Yarim will reside. Now, if you're a builder, you're gonna love these new additions. Monoliths are items that activate background and screen shaders, and will be introduced for certain Calamity bosses and events. These include the Cryogen's Aurora Sky, Plaguebringer Monolith, Leviathan Monolith, Astral Globe, Devour of Gods Monolith, the Exo Obelisk, Yaren's Draconic Incense, and even the Boss Rush Monolith, which has to be my absolute favourite. So what about the list of armor sets coming in the future? As stated by many devs, we're shifting away from 5 helmet armor sets towards more specialized pieces for each class. The priority list is as follows, and will be reworked periodically instead of all at once. Ever since my previous videos, some has received drastic improvements. So let's start off the list again in progression order, beginning with Aerialite. This will be for the Mage and Ranger class, and you'll notice the chest plate is also different as well. As mentioned prior, accompanying the armor set will be a full list of Aerialite equipment. So what about other classes at this stage of the game? If you aren't a fan of the specialized approach, Arsenal armor sets may be what you're looking for. A predominantly multi-class based set with massive customization potential. We have the first of three level of Arsenal armors, with T1 being available at Aerialite. These special abilities have mostly been finalized, where the player can choose between three specials. The utility bonus summons a drone which illuminates the surrounding area, and pressing the hotkey button will allow your drone to scan nearby enemies, traps, and treasure. The offensive bonus, in which either damaging, killing, or just over time, scrap metal will be dropped, filling a new resource bar. Pressing the armor set bonus key will partially consume this bar and shoot homing scrap missiles that can explode into additional shrapnel. And lastly, defensive slash mobility bonuses. Instead of the previously mentioned scrap bar, the player will instead receive an energy bar. You can either keep the bar unused for a move and jump speed boost, or consume the meter for a powerful pulse shield that scales with its charge. Moving on to the next pre-hard mode set, we will see a rework to Satagel being Summoner, Rogue, and Melee specific. Whilst we don't have any existing sprite for it, we can infer from the status concept art, which has been confirmed to be similar in appearance. Next, we have an early work in progress Brimstone Crags armor set for the Mage class. And to round off pre-hard mode is a brand new Evil 2 Rogue set. These will be post perforators slash hive mind with a unique design for their corresponding corruption and crimson counterpart. Moving on to hard mode, we have the Daedalus armor, which will now be Rogue and Summoner related, with their designs mostly finished. Hydrothermic will now be Mage and Melee exclusive, with designs still being a work in progress. And our second Arsenal T2 armor set, which will be available post Plaguebringer Goliath, utilizing infected platings. These don't have detailed descriptions like T1, mostly because they will be released way into the future. However, feel free to check out the previous iterations. Moving on to post Moonlord armor sets, we're getting our final Arsenal T3 upgrades available at post Providence. Similar to T2, special abilities at this T haven't been finalized. Once again, feel free to check out the previous ideas. As for the existing Tarragon armor set, this will be removed or replaced in the future, with talks of either a profaned armor set revolving around the three guardians. Omega Blue, whilst not a total rework has been announced, we can expect to see some tweaks to the tentacles. God Slayer has gone through many iterations, with this being the most updated re-sprite, and will still be for the Rogue, Ranger, and Summoner classes, whilst Melee users will obtain the Silver Armor set. It's unknown whether a Brailler set will change this decision, but we'll just have to see. As for Auric Tesla, we still have the 5 helmet approach, with the Summoner class, Melee, Mage, Rogue, and Ranger. As for our final armor sets, we have Demon Shade and Exosuits. Demon Shade will no longer be a Jack of All Trades multi-class set, but a focus on class specialization, whilst Exo Armor will now be the generalized all-rounder. Here is the base form, and allows you to apply stat customizations like Arsenal. Then we have the overheated plate forms. These will have their own preset stats, and over time, it turns the player defense into attack stats until it reaches a max boiling point, where it will discharge all the energy into a giant death ray. And lastly is the tank form. This is the replacement of the previous miracle plating with enhanced regeneration and damage reduction. That's a lot of armor sets, and I have to reiterate, these will not be released in one update. Calamity will go from pre-hard mode and work their way up, making sure every aspect of progression is polished. 
The last thing I want to touch up on is Exo Avalon compatibility. This mod is probably one of the oldest mods in Team Mod Loader and is one of the main reasons Calamity exists today. Unlike other popular Calamity add-ons such as Catalyst or Infernum, these aren't really official and the Exo Avalon will be the first for official support with Fabsul stating possibilities for boss AI, Avalon super hard mode support, biome support such as the Contagion, recipe support, enemy drop support and probably a whole lot more. That was basically the entire Calamity roadmap recapped. Some things obviously have to be kept secret, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe and goodbye.